Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to NIMBY Rails. Now, uh, I, uh, I was going to uh, show you building this uh, line up out of, uh, out of Airdrie, up through Crossfield, uh, where we uh, dropped it in right about here. Uh, let's just grab that so we can see the catchment. Uh, and then up here to car stairs or we have the attachment there or catchment there didsbury and olds where we even have a tram line uh, i was going to show it but then i was a dummy and i didn't actually set the uh, software to capture the window but and that's not terribly exciting really uh, but let's uh, take a look here at the accounting for the Monday here. Uh, this is when I did the building. So, yeah. Uh, so we had uh, like $170 million in construction, uh, $230 million in trains, uh, and that gets us up to there, right? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you basically the same thing, uh, but I'm going to continue the line up toward uh, Red Deer. I think that's probably going to be more interesting than the uh, than this part here. Um, but, you know, I, I just thought, you know, I'm not going to go back and redo it. So uh, I'll just uh, go through the explanation I had uh, last time that I recorded but didn't have any visuals for. Uh, I was going to make this line a semi-express type line all the way up through to Edmonton and then add local services. But I've decided I'm going to leave it as is, you know, and go through all the towns with it. And then if an express line is needed, I'll build an express line on, on the, like up the highway corridor or something like that. Anyway, uh, let's go in here and start adding uh, train stations. So we're going to need one for Bowdoin here. And I think we can put it right about here. Uh, right about here. I uh, should cover everything. Yeah. So uh, so we put it there. Uh, so that'll be Bowden. Yeah. I see it's counting Bowden as part of Red Deer. Uh, and then Innisfail. We're going to need a station at Innisfail. Um, I think we can come up the, can we fit it in the middle of the highway here? Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, we can. So if we put it here, uh, we're going to need a tram connection into the town. Um, yeah, that's, that's about right. Uh, okay. And we're going to need one at uh, Penhold. Yeah, we'll put one at Penhold. Uh, and if we put it here, yeah, we'll put it there. Okay. There we go. Penhold. Yep. Uh, we're not going to put, well, should we put one at Springbrook? Um, no. And then we're going to need one over here in Red Deer somewhere. And I think the place in Red Deer is going to be the downtown core. And this one is going to be underground. So we're going to put it here. Uh, down to here. Right, okay. So that gets us to Red Deer. Now let's go through and name these stations properly. Uh, this is going to be Red Deer Intercity. Yep, good. We're definitely going to need a bunch of trams at Red Deer. Uh, and then this is going to be Penhold. Uh, Intercity, yep. And this is going to be Innisfail. 
uh, intercity, right? And then we have down here, Bowden. Uh, that's going to be intercity. Yep. And then we have down here, Olds. Okay. Now we just need to run a uh, track up there. Yeah. Uh, so can we get a ground track out of here? That's ground, right? Yeah, that is ground. Okay, so we can come out this way. Yep. Okay, yeah. So the actual uh, rail line in real life here uh, goes uh, in between the two roads here and comes up about this way. And that does seem like it's going to be uh, practical here because it's going in the right direction. So let's do that. Uh, we got a crossing. Uh, nope. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We come across that way. Yep. Uh, right. I'm going to keep coming up along the road here until we get to Bowden. Okay. Yeah. We can come up this way. Yeah. Okay. Now coming out of Bowden, we can come down this way. Yeah. And how is this? Okay. We come down to here and we, okay. Yeah, that will work. Good. Now we need to get out of here. I uh, come around this way and this way. Yeah. Okay. And then we can come around this way. Yeah, we'll come up that way and we'll come through there. Okay. Now we need to jump into the middle of the road here. Okay. Uh, so we'll do that. Okay. Back to the, back to the ground. Right. Uh, okay. Come up the middle here. Why am I coming up the middle? Because there's no obstructions there. It's a limited access freeway and there's a gap. So we can run the, uh, the line up here without conflicting with anything. And that just seems like a practical thing to do. So we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. And then up to here. And then where are we at here? Uh, we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. So here's the South uh, Innisfail interchange. Right. We got a bridge, a couple of bridges. Yep. And then we come up here. Yeah. Oh, we hit the station catchment. Yeah. Okay. Into there. Good. Now we're going to need to get up to Penhold, where we're going to have to get out of the median here. Um, what we're going to do is uh, come straight up this way. Yeah. Okay, now here we'll elevate. Yeah. And then we come across this way. Yep. And then we can get around to here. Okay. Now we'll do the ground, ground thing again. And trace along the road. 
Right. So I'm not being too particularly careful about maximum speed on the tracks here. Uh, the reason I'm not being too particularly careful is that this isn't, strictly speaking, a uh, high-speed service. This is a local service, right? Uh, okay, now, can we get across here? No. Okay. We can get across the water. Uh, oh, we'd have to do that. Okay. So we'll do this. Viaduct across. Uh, like that. Okay. And we got a crossing there. Crossing there. Okay. Uh, we're making some, some sort of progress here. Uh, okay, I'm going to need another viaduct here, I think. Yep, I'm going to. So let's do that. So I'm uh, in my uh, head. I'm considering these uh, viaducts and so on just crossings rather than uh, bridges. Uh, even though they're behaving like bridges, that's I'm just considering them crossings. Uh, okay, so we're got up to uh, Penhold, right? Uh, now out of Penhold, how? Okay, well we just just come along like that, right? Yeah, and then we need to head into Red Deer. Okay, well we're going to continue up along this road. This is actually a uh, an, an, uh, a highway uh, in actual real life. This is a highway that we're going beside. Um, yeah, it's the it's the old uh, main road. Uh, so the actual rail line does run somewhere uh, around this path. Uh, I don't know exactly where it runs, uh, but it does run somewhere up this way. Now, is this going to complain about water? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, so we can punch through here. And we can. Okay, now we're getting to the point where uh, we're going to have more expensive stuff going on. Um, right. Uh, okay. Now, I think I'm going to go underground. This is going to be expensive. Wait. I could come up the the middle of this road. Uh, no, uh, I'm going to go underground here uh, like this. Yeah. Uh, how will that do? Well, we probably want to come underground like this. Yeah, come in this way. Okay, come in this way. Come in this way. Good. That gets us to Red Deer. Now we need 238 million to build this. Yeah. So, and this is just, uh, according to the readout here, 90 kilometers. So, uh, yeah, that's actually, yeah, it is a bit, it's not that far off, actually. Uh, right. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to up tempo here, and then we'll let the, uh, the cash roll in for a bit, and I'm just going to, uh, come back, uh, when the, uh, when the cash is in. So uh, uh, I'll be back in a moment. Well, I'm back. Uh, it's been 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, 
Uh, I've uh, run the uh, the clock forward a bit. We're still ticking along. I need to put this back into uh, full screen mode. Just a moment. Okay. Yep. Yeah, now it's back to the proper size. Uh, right. Uh, so I'm going to leave it on uh, fast speed here. Uh, we got enough cash here to build the uh, line, so we're going to do it. Yeah. Okay. Now what we need to do is expand the existing. Uh, um, a train line, right? So we'll go in here. Uh, yeah, it's the inner city one. Nope. Nope. Here. Yep. Uh, close that. Go here. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going up to olds, uh, where we have the the uh, connection already uh, established. We're going to add stops past that point. So we're going to go up here, Bowden, uh, Innisfail, uh, Penhold, and Red Deer. Yep. And then back down to these ones on the way back. Yep. And these, this one, and we need one more, which is here, right? Yes. Okay. So that gets those in there. Now, what we need to do is adjust the timing. So our uh, we're, we're going to go for an ideal speed of 300K. And we're going to estimate the leg timing. Yep. Okay. So now it's telling us that we have a, a recommended minimum interval of 2844. Now I want that to be 15 minutes ish. So I'm going to set that to 15, but that means we need more trains, right? So if we um, go in here and we've got, this is the inner city one. Uh, if we, If we do this, no, what, hello, what, go in here, um, do this, yeah, okay, so we're going to clone it, and we're going to, um, yeah, we don't have enough cash to do that, well, what I'm going to do is, uh, we're, I could just run it forward again. Um, yeah, because we need, we need, how, how many trains do we have on the, uh, on the line? Uh, five trains. Uh, to get that down to 15 minutes, we're going to need to add like four trains to this. I could just borrow the cash or I could run the game forward another uh, bit here. Um, no, let's uh, let's stop that business. Uh, okay. Right. No. So this is a this is a new interface, incidentally, for the uh, timing calculation. Uh, it takes into account uh, train acceleration and all of that jazz, uh, and it gives you an estimated uh, minimum interval hint. So that's useful. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely. A, uh, a thing. Um, I could just run this every half an hour. Uh, that's probably fine. Um, it might be. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to, I'm going to want to run it more often than that. So uh, I'm just going to uh, tick the uh, tick the, well, I'm going to turn that off and we're going to go under trains and, uh, yeah. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, tick up to max speed again. So, uh, in the past week or so, the developer has, uh, as in the past couple weeks has done uh, quite a few, uh, patch updates to the game. And uh, from what he's been uh, mentioning on the forums, uh, there's some, uh, some fairly impressive stuff coming yet. 
you know, and, and quite frankly, for what the game is, this is really impressive. Um, and he's, there's been talk about a, uh, a new uh, uh, scheduling system, eventually, uh, which will uh, allow for much better control of uh, train routing and everything. Uh, there's been talk of, uh, of uh, changing the track building so that you can build individual tracks and have proper signaling so that you can uh, run the stuff on multiple tracks uh, properly. Uh, you know, and among the updates since the early access uh, release uh, popped up is this max speed mode, uh, for instance, where it just runs the game as fast as possible on your hardware. So uh, that makes it a lot less tedious when you're trying to accumulate cash, right? Uh, is then you can just uh, put it on max speed mode, go away for a bit, come back and see what's happened, right? Uh, so yeah, we, we've got that. So there's been quite a few updates and uh, the game has generally improved as a result. And I have to give the developer credit because he's just a single guy doing this. And I'm absolutely amazed at what he's accomplished here. And yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, what, what he manages to accomplish with it in the future. And if somebody has a budget that they can hand him, uh, to uh, hire some help and, uh, you know, build, uh, say, NIMBY Rails 2, uh, you know, once this is uh, settled a bit or just do uh, major uh, further development, I, I can't imagine what the guy would end up with, uh, seriously. Uh, this, is, this is seriously impressive. So if somebody had some no- no strings attached funding where he can, he maintained his creative control uh, and all of that. Uh, it would be interesting to see where this would end up. Uh, this is uh, seriously, it's, it's impressive. Okay. We've got enough cash here that we can uh, uh, buy a train. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to go back into the lines and bring this back up and now you see it's saying 20 24 minutes right uh so uh we need three more at least to, for the 15 minute interval to make sense so uh we jump back up to the max speed and then we see what happens i i want to put one more train on here and i might drop the interval to 20 minutes but you can see here the uh the amount's going up pretty quickly so uh, you know, it's not that long to wait. Uh, now, of course, there's not much to look at when you're doing this, right? Uh, so one of the things that uh, that would help immensely, uh, and uh, the developer is aware of this, uh, is the, uh, the game simulation code is uh, single-threaded, basically. Uh, so it can only use one core. As a result of that, the game uh, can't take good advantage of modern CPUs with their four or eight or 10 or 12 or 20 cores, right? So uh, if he could get the uh, simulation to, uh, to run on all cores and uh, run well, uh, this number would be going up way faster. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a 10 core machine and uh, if it's going this fast on one core, I can only imagine if it was able to employ all 10 cores, it would probably be going six or seven times that fast, faster, right? Uh, but uh, well, what do you mean six or seven times? Don't you have 10 cores? Yeah, I do. But the thing about uh, multi-core stuff, multi-threading things, is you do have uh, synchronization overhead. And that takes uh, that it does mean you get some diminishing returns as you throw more cores at a lot of problems. This particular one might do actually very well in a uh, multi-core uh, environment, though. So it might get closer to the uh, the ten times improvement with ten cores uh, when he gets the code that way. Uh, eventually, he'll get there, but it's one guy, and I I mean I can't emphasize that enough. It's one guy and this is impressive seriously impressive 
Um, yeah, we're just about there for another uh, train. Uh, so as you can see, uh, things are starting to tick up really fast money-wise. Uh, so uh, later down the line on this whole grand plan adventure, we'll be able to knock off stuff basically real time without having to do this whole accumulate money uh, trick gag thing here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, basically... Uh, you know, the, the economy doesn't have a lot of depth to it, right? You know, another thing he's talking about adding is uh, subsidies from local authorities, things like that, uh, to encourage you to build things in places that aren't going to just suck back the cash. Because quite frankly, uh, most, uh, most uh, public transport is subsidized one way or another uh, by local authorities. Okay, I think we think we have enough here. So if we go back to trains and we clone it, um, yeah, we have enough. So we'll uh, purchase that. Now we'll go back to lines. Now it's suggesting 20 and a half minutes. So uh, let's just, uh, let's paste that in. Yeah, and we'll, we'll set that. Okay. So I think that's enough uh, trains uh, on that particular line. Uh, 20 minutes is certainly a good uh, spacing for an intercity uh, line. Now if we uh, come on up here uh, to uh, Red Deer, uh, that's in his fail. Uh, Red Deer, yeah. So Red Deer is going to be a bit of an adventure and uh, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to hold that for the next episode. Uh, now the whole reason for that is uh, we can substantially improve the usage on the Red Deer Intercity Station and this line by adding a tram network into Red Deer. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to lay it out however. Uh, but you can see uh, we've got uh, we've got some some possible uh, arrangements we can do. Uh, bring in stuff from up here, uh, down into here, um, and we've got uh, got a fair bit here that we can bring into the uh, intercity station, and that will improve the uh, intercity transportation. But before I go, uh, let's uh, take a look. We're on August 1st, game time. So uh, we so if we advance through this, we've had uh, twenty odd million uh, daily. Uh, we bought a train here, and we're still only forty seven down. Uh, twenty five million for a Friday. Uh, Seventeen on a Saturday. Uh, we bought a train on the Sunday, and we're up four and a half million already on the Monday. So as you can see, uh, we're doing a pretty good amount of, uh, of money coming in. Now, if we look in here on the, uh, uh, the next payment, August 3rd, it's going to take us negative. Uh, I think, well, uh, no, I, I, it might not. I'm just going to advance this to August 3rd. Um, right, so we're not quite in August 3rd will start about 16, 16 o'clock here, um, or 17 maybe, uh, no, 16, uh, okay, so I'll just advance it another 10, 8, 8 hours game time, uh, no, we're not going to go negative. Uh, you're, it, it, the game doesn't fail you if you go negative. You just can't build anything. Yeah, we're not going to go negative. Uh, too much uh, cash came in on the uh, so far on the Monday. But this number should drop down by $30 million. Uh, Yep, see, there it did. So if we slow down here, we go back in here. Uh, and you can see, uh, if we come up to the current day, 
uh, financing, there's our 30 million, right? So uh, we've definitely got enough income to cover all of this. So uh, we could even take out more loans, but I, I d d don't see the need to do that, right? So I haven't, right? Uh, so basically, uh, we're doing okay. Uh, we're not seeing a huge amount of uh, refunds and compensation compared to the total sales. So I'm not particular. I'm not concerned with getting uh, uh, 700k in refunds and compensation compared to 18 million. Uh, and most days, it's it's uh, better than that, right? Okay. Um, I could spend a bunch of time optimizing that, but it's not really worth worth doing, at least for this particular project. Uh, so next time I'm going to do some trams in Red Deer and probably extend the main uh, line up here to Black Falls and maybe up to Lacombe. That's not Lacombe, uh, just so you know. It's actually Lacombe. Uh, you would think it'd be Lacombe, but no, it's just Lacombe. And, uh, yeah, and then we'll have, uh, eventually up to Pinoca. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a, and then Wetaskiwin, uh, we'll end up coming up to Wetaskiwin and then back around this way up to Leduc, probably Millet, maybe, maybe not. Uh, probably not Kavanaugh either, uh, but we'll definitely do Leduc and probably a stop over here at the Edmonton International Airport. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can do around Edmonton. So uh, there's quite a bit left to do, but here is the overview of the uh, intercity line here. Uh, up to Red Deer. So this is going to expand further. And then once, uh, once I've got it north up toward Edmonton, I think I'll come down toward Lethbridge. Uh, yeah, down to Lethbridge. So that's another uh, long, long path. And then probably, and then eventually I'll do an east-west one that comes out through Madison Hat and Swift Current, right? Uh, so here's the Here's the world map, and there is everything we've done. It's completely insignificant, isn't it? Uh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And I think my ultimate plan is to build a uh, train line from St. John's to Reykjavik. <laughs> yeah, yeah, St. John's to Reykjavik. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, uh, that's enough... Uh, uh, blather there. Uh, as you can see, if I leave it on fast while I'm doing the trams in uh, Red Deer, we'll have lots of cash. Uh, anyway, uh, that's going to be all for this episode. Uh, yeah, uh, that's all for this episode. Uh, you know, and this is what NIMBY Rails is. Uh, there, there isn't that much to it, really. Uh, but I'm just going to keep doing this, and if a couple people keep watching it, I'll keep doing it really that's what it comes down to right uh, anyway that's all for this time so stay healthy don't let the ongoing apocalypse get you down too much you know there is some sort of a light at the end of the tunnel apparently and yeah uh see you back next time